A local man is making headlines for possibly discovering some of the oldest stars in the universe. And joining me now is Dr. Eli Visbel, an associate professor of astronomy at the University of Toledo. Thanks for being here. So how did you get involved with astronomy in the first place? As a kid, were you out there with the telescope looking at the stars, or is it something later in life that sparked your interest? Uh, great question. Uh, I always found the stars kind of interesting, but more than anything else, I was just very drawn to mathematics uh, and, and science and problem solving as a youngster. And uh, so as I moved along in school, I really enjoyed taking physics, um, computer science classes, these kind of things. And so that's kind of how I ended up on this So path. what you're doing is kind of marrying uh, astronomy with physics with mathematics. Explain kind of what it is you're doing. Sure. So what I and the other members of my group who are uh, PhD students. This is at UT. Yes, at the University of Toledo. Uh, I have a research group that's comprised of myself and a few uh, PhD students as well as undergraduate students. And uh, we do theoretical astrophysics. So our job is to try to understand, uh, make theoretical models of what observers see with telescopes. And so some of the tools we use to do this are we use computers to make numerical simulations, to, to try to predict how stars form, how galaxies form, how supermassive black holes form. And then we um, you know, use these simulations to compare them with the data we get from telescopes like the new James Webb Space Telescope. A lot of people can't understand like what's to be gained by doing something like this, but, but it, really there's a lot to be gained because like even the space program, we've been leaps and bounds in a lot of different areas. Uh, sure, yeah. So when we study the, the, the first stars, for instance, um, it teaches us sort of our cosmic origins. Where do we come from? So uh, shortly after the, the universe started in, in the Big Bang, the universe was mainly hydrogen and helium. There weren't like oxygen, carbon, some of the chemicals, uh, elements and, 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 and molecules that, that we find today and that make us up and stuff up on Earth. And so we, we kind of understand, this helps us understand how we went from this simple stage in the early universe where there was just hydrogen and helium to what the universe looks like today and how galaxies form. Um, and you're finding the oldest stars. Now, explain what population three is. Yeah, that connects to what I was, was sort of alluding to there, that um, shortly after the Big Bang, the universe chemistry was much simpler than it is today. It was essentially just hydrogen and helium gas. There weren't heavy elements like oxygen, nitrogen, carbon. And population three stars are just designed or defined as the stars created from this primordial gas. So stars that just form from hydrogen and helium gas. And up to this point, they'd really only been studied theoretically and hadn't been observed. And in our simulations, we saw that they seem to be quite interesting in the sense that um, they might have typical masses 100 times larger than our sun. So these first stars could be much bigger, uh, but we had only studied them uh, in simulations and theoretically, until recently with the James Webb Space Telescope, our group kind of identified that perhaps the, this uh, recently observed object could be the first detection uh, of these objects. A lot of people would be familiar with the Hubble. That's been up there for quite a while. It's, it's aging out, but, but the, the Webb, uh, what are you able to, how is it just raise the stakes of what you're able to do now with what, understand what you're trying to do? Yeah, there's a couple ways that, that make it valuable for studying the first stars and what we think about in our group. Um, first, it's an infrared uh, telescope. And so it turns out that light that's in the visual range and we can see in, in the ultraviolet and ultraviolet light, um, which we can't quite see, those uh, ranges of light are very important for studying the first stars. But due to the expansion of the universe, that light gets Doppler shifted and and changed into the, the infrared. It's the same way for sound that say when an ambulance drives by you, uh, you hear a high pitch mm -hmm. and then a low pitch is when it drives right by. But the whole, exp the universe is expanding and it takes that optical and UV light and Doppler shifts it due to the whole expansion of the universe into the infrared that the James Webb Space Telescope can see. We have about um, 30 seconds left here. Just uh, how computers are getting better and better and better. AI is coming in now mm -hmm. and becoming. How, uh, and since you deal a lot with theoreticals and computers, how is that going to help you do your job better? Well, 
when it will give us lar uh, larger or higher resolution simulations, which we'll be able to uh, to sort of compare with the observations from James Webb and make sure we understand what it's seeing. Uh, we're also beginning to use uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence to accelerate our simulations to, to you know, check lots of different parameters, figure out what's going on, and, and really try to figure out what the observers are, are seeing out in space. Our world has changed a lot and it's going to keep changing even more all the time. Doctor, thank you so much for being here today. Okay, thank you very much.